I feel like I was born out of the sand. The sand is in my blood. Listen to the sand. The echoes, the entire history. This is where the amusements were born. This is where so much happened in Americana. Every ride you go on in the world, every amusement park you go on in the world, owes to Coney Island. How you doing? I'm Jay, and I'm going to give you a little tour of Coney Island today, both uh, Coney Island's history and uh, a couple little stories from my own personal history as we go along. We're going to head to the beach right now because that's where the story of Coney Island actually begins, on the beach. We had beer and dancing, prostitution and gambling, and swimming. It was a very rough beach. There was no law and order. 1920 until World War II, everything was a nickel here. A subway ride was a nickel, a hot dog was a nickel, a beer was a nickel, corn on the car was a nickel. So you would come to Coney Island with a date with one dollar in your pocket and never run out of things to do. Those were the days. It was just like this gigantic midway, 10 blocks long. It's the greatest place in the world. Not too many people even realize anymore the historical significance of where we're standing right now. This here trolley pole goes way back to the time when Dreamland was actually here. And this one in particular has some significance because when the park burned, Right in the middle of the fire, one of the lions caught fire and burst out of the building and ran out into the middle of the street right here. And he let out a huge roar and lunged right toward where we're standing. So everybody in proximity of where we are scrambled right up this pole. I feel like uh, all these places I'm describing, you know, from the past, I could see them in my mind. Luna Park and Steeplechase and Dreamland. I truly feel like I was there. You know, the sounds, the sights, you know, the experiences, I just absorbed it all. I could see it playing as a movie in my head almost. They get ready to open up. I hope you know when they do, I'm getting on. I always ride the Thunderbolt. I was on the first train. Um, it was quite a, quite a moment when they finally had the grand opening for the Thunderbolt. And I was there, I got on the first train with some folks and uh, with two other friends of mine from the neighborhood. And you could tell who's from here and who's not because there were nine people on the train. And the three of us that were on the train have a hand straight up like this for the whole ride. Yeah. 
There's someone puked right at the top of the loop. And we came down, and the same puke just landed right in the same train when we got to the bottom. It's no lie. That happens. And hey, now let's go over and get our ice. It's hot and humid and feels like Florida over here. Ah, uh, ready. This is mango, strawberry on top, and blueberry on the bottom. All the readers, ices are made from fresh fruit. Mmm. That's insanely good. That's insanely good. You go to Nathan's back then, so the lines were out to the sidewalk. So they had to be fast. They had a long grill with 10 guys. Each one would put out 20 hot dogs a minute. Now you wait 20 minutes to get one hot dog. Back then, you had people that worked those grills for 30, 40 years, their whole lives, because they worked for Nathan himself. You know, and he treated his people good. Every single place in Coney Island was like that. You had a sense of place, you had a sense of character. Up the window wheel. Bye-bye. Never closed, never stopped. It never lost its spirit, never lost its fun, never lost its heart. You know, it's this is the heart of Coney Island right here. We're really up here right now. <laughs> you take a look around, you see Manhattan in the distance, you see the ocean. On a good day, you can see England. You know, it's beautiful. There's a million Ferris wheels in the world, but there's only one Wonder Wheel. These were all rides. We had Carousel, we had Fun House, we had a dark ride, arcades, food stands, shooting galleries, a kiddie park. That was the north side of Surf Avenue. Surf Avenue was amusements on both sides. You took it away, and here we are. We have furniture stores now. You come into Coney Island, OK, the world famous amusement capital of the world, OK? You're going to come here to buy a sofa bed or a futon? And what are you going to do, take it on the subway with you? I'm always complaining about how different it is. I want it back the way it was. But fuck out of luck, Chuck, as far as that goes, man. You know, it's not going to happen. It's never coming back. I'm sorry about the profanity. The big thing is, what's they going to do with the empty lots? If you look at the Thunderbolt, you got a great new roller coaster, and what's next to it? An empty lot. You know, come on. Fleas, ticks, people throwing garbage, it looks bad, it's going to encourage people to make it look worse. That's what people do. Come on, we'll walk, I'll tell you about the beach. Perfect example of what I'm talking about right here, doing it half right. If you look up at the pier after the storm, they replaced the wooden timbers with these concrete beams, which is good. This is very good because it's too heavy to be lifted in the future by a future storm. But the decking's all wrong. It's fake wood. Why are you going to have fake wood? They solved the problem of the thing being floated away by making the concrete beams. This is beautiful. But the decking, plastic? Coney Island isn't about plastic. Come on. I'll show you a little more over here. How do you like that view up the pier, huh? It's like the boiler room of the Titanic. <laughs> All right. My mom's parents met here. They dated and they got engaged. We went on the Wonder Wheel. If it weren't for that meeting in Coney Island, I wouldn't be here. I've never been married, never had kids, so I was uh, married to Coney Island, you know. Uh, 
I'd rather, uh, I'd rather die here than live anywhere else. <laughs> it's the sacred ground to me. Home is here, Coney Island. You know, when something's taken away from you that you love, you want it even more. You do anything to have it back. I became obsessed with Coney Island when I had it taken away from me. And it's, you know, one of the saddest chapters of my life. It was right in the mid-1970s. I was nine years old. There was a lot of gang violence, extreme gang violence over here. Some fires were arson, some were just kids partying and setting fires. I was looking at my favorite place in the world, getting burned down. My dad says to me, this is why we don't go to Coney Island anymore. And I just start crying, I start crying, you know. And it was in the paper every weekend, especially in the summer, another fire in Coney Island. Another fire in Coney Island. Just burning the place to the ground. And uh, they kept doing it until there was nothing left to burn. My parents, they just moved us out of Brooklyn completely. We moved to Staten Island. Your whole family went to shit when we moved out there. So I just packed up everything and moved west. I changed the dresses 35 times, and that Coney Island sand always was with me. And the moment I left, Coney Island kept calling me back. Everything was gone. The private developer bought up all the properties, and then they ripped out the whole park. We protested on the steps at City Hall and we got the city to buy back the property back. And that's how the amusement industry was saved here. This really should be designated national playground. That's the only way this will ever be fully protected and get the recognition it deserves ever again. This is where every amusement park was born out of. This is where every major ride invention was created out of. You know, we're on the right track. We got new rides coming in. That's great. But we're still missing the most important thing, the heartbeat. I guess I'm not speaking the right language again. You have to have people come in here with their own business so it brings character and flavor. Give people in the neighborhood a real chance to go and earn themselves a living running their own independent business here at a fair rent. I feel like I'm an ambassador for Coney Island. Eventually, my time will be up, but Coney Island will keep going. My chapter here is to get the stories together let the new generations know how important the place is. Not just one amusement park, not just a brand. It's not what it's about. It's part of who we are. People need a day off, they need to be amused. And that's why they come to Coney Island. Always did, and always will.